Oh, now I'm driving towards the border. The border is not a beautiful house with animals like I was expecting, like just an eagle to be floating around like a palatial estate, a fellow in a white suit. Come on in, son. <laughs> Kettle's on. <laughs> it's not, not what it was. It looked like a factory that made despair and disparaging comments about things that I love. Just like waiting for people to walk. You like Star Wars? <laughs> Look like a prison from the future. So I'm driving towards this place and I get into the line, I'm moving forward. Now, I get very nervous when I'm talking to border guards because border guards have guns and I don't have any guns. And you can't win an argument with a man who has a gun and you don't have a gun because if he disagrees, he'll just shoot you in the face. Dead men tell no tales. My dad taught me that. He's gonna remind me of it after the show. I don't know what that means. So I drive up and I'm there to get my visa validated. That's the line I was told to say. I was told to say, I'm here to get my visa validated. Visa valid. I'm here to get my visa validated. Validated, validated, visa validated. Now I pull up, it's raining. Got my visa and my passport in my hand and the window opens and the border guard is wearing sunglasses and it's raining. And I thought out loud, can this guy shoot lasers out of his eyes? Which as turns out, warning sign right there takes my passport, he does some stuff with it, I don't know, he put it in a lockbox, and a man with the biggest gun I've ever seen in my, it was that big, right there, just straddling his shoulder, marches me into the building. I get in line, it's this DMV-ish looking place, it's frightening, and it has like that weird, like clean but too clean smell, like just like, the soap is burning my eyes. And I'm in line, it's a short line, and I was like, oh great, short line. That was a stupid thing to think. <laughs> Guy in front of me, nice Canadian fellow who's wearing a plaid shirt and shoes on, because if you don't wear shoes, that's a, it's a bad idea to try and impress a country that's, I, I don't have shoes, can I come work here? <laughs> he's there, and he's arguing with the border guard. And not a polite, allow me to disagree with you, sir. <laughs> this is what I walked into. Well, I don't give a shit what your badge says. I'm going to America. <laughs> Couldn't even say, uh, America. Border guard had a nice retort. He said, sir, I would let you into the country, but you've presented me with no identification, no passport. All you've done is shown me a green card with the name whited out. That is tampering with federal documents. You have 10 seconds to leave this building and drive back to Canada, or you are spending three months in federal penitentiary. <laughs> My Canadian friend disagreed with the border guard's point. I wanted to continue the argument in a dynamic fashion, so what did he do? He gestured forward and he pointed at the border guard, but not in a like, hey, aggressive. <laughs> Pokes the border guard in the nose. <laughs> froze and held it there so long I thought, is this guy waiting for the honking noise? <laughs> At which point, six border guards jumped on this guy. They handcuffed him. They put the rope around his feet, hogtied him, and dragged him into a broom closet. <laughs> At which point, over the loudspeaker, I heard, next to the window, John Hastings. I walk up to the window, border guard greets me and says, you look nervous. Yeah. I just saw you guys disappear a man. How do you want me to walk up? Just, oh. <laughs> Happens all the time at my house. So can I come to America? I got knives. You look great in that uniform. <laughs> Let me in, though. As much as I've talked about how humanity is on the verge of economic despair, how the pillars of fire are going to burst through that very window and consume us all, I am happy to be alive right now. Right now, because right now is the greatest time to be alive ever, 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 ever in all of human history. It is. It is. Because right now we have text messaging. Um, 
It's true, guys. It's true. That's the greatest way to communicate since talking itself. I don't know some of you were saying, I don't believe you, buddy. I don't believe you. That's right, some of you talk like Rock Hudson. I don't believe you, McMillan and wife. That's a reference from the 1960s that wasn't funny then. What am I doing? Here's why text messaging is the greatest way to communicate since talking itself. Because text messaging reveals secrets about your friends free of charge. Uh-huh. Who are you with, Rogers or Bell? What a great company. That's built into your package. Here's a story to prove my point. Recently, a friend of mine came over to my house and he helped me move a couch. And we moved the couch and he moved it and then he left. And I wanted to thank him, but he left before I could thank him. What do you do? Do you run down the street screaming thanks? No, that's crazy. <laughs> Go over to your cell phone, type out a T-bomb. That's what the kids are calling it now. I'm hip and urban. What's up? <laughs> so I type out my T-bomb. I type it out real nice. I type out thanks exclamation point perfect now i have a very futuristic phone some of you might not have even heard of this technology yet but i actually have a little man who's been shrunken down and he lives inside my phone and his job is is to read my text messages and decide what words would be better than the words i've already chosen and what does he do he changes those words without ever letting me know. So I have thanks, exclamation point, ready to go. I'm excited to send it. So I turn my head in anticipation of sending to say, I'm sending it to no one, but I just get excited because it's magical. And that's when the little man strikes. He opens a little door on the screen and he climbs up a little ladder. He changes a few key words, transforming thanks, exclamation point, into blacks, exclamation point. <laughs> I don't notice, I hit send. Four minutes later, my friend keeps my front door open, jumps into my living room in a karate stance and says, I got your message, are you okay? Where are they? And I learned that day my friend was racist. Thank you, text messaging. Where would I be without you? I know that last joke was a little confusing. I am not racist. I know some of you are confused by that because I look like a racist. I got blonde eyebrows that they had to color in with a paintbrush just to appear on camera. This white, sheety, I look like Hitler's wet dream. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm a KKK uniform. Come to life with jokes. How are you? It's bizarre. Every time I'm just like, I, just, anything. I say the word racist, and I'm like, wait for it. He's going to say, but Croatians. Wait for it. But I want to bring racial unity, guys. That's going to be my goal. Because as someone who looks like a racist, I have to break that stereotype. Got to break that stereotype. Because the, what's the stereotype of white people? That we're evil. This is how evil we are. None of you knew that was our stereotype. <laughs> we distracted you with all the other ones and then did some evil shit. Don't believe me? Read a little book called History. I want to hit close to home for all the white people in the crowd. I don't remind a shoe. <laughs> but I brought racial unity, guys. I brought people closer together. I did. It was in San Francisco. That's how what cool people call San Francisco. You can use it. No big deal. <laughs> it was in San Francisco. And I was traveling on the train and I had to pee. And not one of those fun, like, oh, better find a place to stop and take a tinkle. This'll be a delight. See a different urinal in the US? Oh, what a treat. No, 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 this was a, you have 30 seconds before you make moisture in your pants and become that guy forever. What guy do you mean? The guy who peed himself on the subway car. If you guys have ever seen that before, you are picturing him right now in your head. Oh, that guy, blonde hair, Aryan, it was you all along. So I jumped off the train in an area called Oakland. Now, I'd never been to Oakland before, but I was told one fact about Oakland by a police officer. I didn't say this, it was the police officer. It was in the airport, I had bags. He walked up to me and said, where are you going, son? And I said, uh, uh, San Francisco. And he was like, good, stay out of Oakland. 
Oakland's where San Francisco keeps its black people. And he said that to me because I looked like a fucking racist. And he thought I would high five him and go, good point, buddy, see you at the meetings. Instead I went, huh? No. Oh. But as I jumped off the car, I felt the surge. I was gonna merge San Francisco and Oakland together, bringing them closer together. I was running down the street because I had to pee and not like a, like a, ah, 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 running, screaming. I bumped into an old black man. He turned, white boy, why are you running? I have to pee. Finally, you motherfuckers come up with a reason. I don't know what that means, but we hugged. Racial unity, everybody. Racial unity. Well, last joke, everyone. I want to leave on a positive message. We've delved pretty dark. We've gone to some weird places, and you guys have stuck with me for the entire show, and I really appreciate that. It's gone to some weird, dark places, because that's kind of what I am. I'm kind of a weird, strange, kooky guy who's like, great right, peanut butter. <laughs> like, that's what I do. And I do it because I'm a comedian, and comedy is the job that I got into five years because I love it. I do it because I love it. I don't do it for pay. I would like to one day. <laughs> I don't do it for pay, and I do it because I love it. And that's a job you should have. If you're doing something you don't love, stop doing it. It will erode your soul, it will make you want to die. And I speak from someone with experience. I know some of you right now are exhausted because you spend every morning this week staring at your hot cup of coffee every morning thinking, you know, if I pour this on my crotch, I could go home right now. And I appreciate that you didn't, and you worked hard, and you came to the show to support capitalism, which in turn feeds me. And I appreciate that you came. And I can speak about your experience because I had one of the worst jobs ever. I was a telemarketer for two and a half, yeah, thank you. See what that just did? I told you what I did, and you're, what the fuck? There's enough of it, we could kill him. We could kill him. And where is head? <laughs> Interrupt my dinner, will you? It's such a strange job. I remember the day I left that world and entered this world of dick jokes and fart humorisms. It was a Monday, it was 9.02. I was standing in my cubicle looking for something to kill myself with. And as I was stroking the stapler menacingly and looking at the escape key on my keyboard, thinking, you know, if I choke on that key, that will be an ironic death. The first call of the day rang through my headset and I went right into the pitch. Hi, it's John Hastings calling from the Merchants Association. How are you doing this morning? Can I offer you some? The guy just stopped me right there and said, John, I don't want what you're selling. And how about you go fuck your mother? Now what this guy didn't know is that I love my mother and I am from the streets in that the ranch-style bungalow I was raised in is on a street lined with maple trees. So I know how to roll when a biatch breeze on a grill. I just tossed up some gang signs and gave this guy a little, listen up, you son of a bitch. I have a gun and your address and I'm coming to kill you. And it was at that moment my supervisor happened to walk right by. He said, uh, John, could I see you in my office for a moment? I went into his office, he sat down, I sat down. He said, so John, I was monitoring that last call. Ooh. What do you think you did wrong? I looked at him and I answered honestly. I said, boss, I don't think I should have told him I was coming. <laughs> you guys have been fantastic. Thank you very much.